welcome to another episode of Earning the Hate. Hey, young people. Man, this is kind of sad to watch. Girl's got mental problems. She's she's not without fault in this, but cops are just shooting and killing people so fast. This girl is not a threat. She gets on her knees, and uh, the police say they lie. Notice the date on this. They're just releasing it. They lie and say she pointed a gun at him. No audio. Shows him the gun, says it's fake, it's not real. Drops down, and he shoots her seven times and kills her. Wow. Really? Black police sergeant, um, follically challenged. How did we get here? Here we go. Earning the hate. Not to death less than 30 seconds after crossing paths with a longtime San Antonio police sergeant. Long time San Antonio police sergeant. The official account the past 16 months was Hannah Westall pointed a gun at the veteran officer causing him to use deadly force, but police footage obtained by our defenders doesn't show that happening. So the narrative was she pointed a gun at him. Now look, I'm not saying this girl's without fault, but this story is just so consistent with law enforcement today lying with unaccountability. The DA said it was a good shoot, is not charging him. He faces no nothing. The city's going to get sued and they're going to pay out huge taxpayer money. Meanwhile, the lion chief and the lion sergeant who lied in his report and the fact that they hid this video for over two years, no problem. Earning the hate. She was gunned down like a dog. I believe it's to spend to get the media attention off of the SAPD. As our Dylan Collier reports, it's the third time in less than two years Chief William McManus has provided information about fatal shootings involving his officers, which was later proven to be incorrect. Third time he's lied to the press and gave false information. No problem. Correct. A warning. The story that may not be suitable for... San Antonio 911, this is Crystal. Do you need police, fire, EMS? You guys need to get a cop over here. At least shut your house. That was the call that started it all in late March of last year. Anna Westall, a 26-year-old with a history of mental illness. History of mental illness. So this is this is where I'm kind of... Uh, I'm kind of okay that she kind of created a lot of this. She shouldn't be carrying around a replica gun. Probably shouldn't have reached for it. Probably shouldn't have done. But she's got mental illness. Why wasn't this corrected before? And why the hell did her mom let her carry around this freaking replica gun? Her mom justifies it. Was walking near a north side shopping center at Heedner and Vance Jackson. When people began to... According to her mom, she's 5'2", 95 pounds. Notice what looked like an Uzi in the back of her... That looks like a pretty real Uzi. However, it's kind of funny. The Domino's guy go, ah, I know her sweatpants couldn't support a real gun, so I knew it was fake. <laughs> Wet pants. The 911 caller claiming Westall looked all distraught while in possession of the weapon. What like, color? You know, you have... But appearances can be deceiving. It's black. It's a gun. It's black. It's a gun. Wow. Wow. That was a black woman that said that. I didn't say that. I don't want you two coming here saying, man, you just said all black guns are bad. I, the, the, I'm just repeating what the black female said to the cops. That submachine gun was instead a replica that didn't work. Westall's mother explains. She was Listen to this mom explain. I mean, this just freaking kills me. It was 5'2", 95 pounds. Marlo Andre says her daughter didn't have a car and walked everywhere. So she carried the replica to stop men from coming up to her. She carried a replica gun to stop men from coming up to her. People, you don't pull out a fake gun because if somebody recognizes it as fake, kind of like this Domino's manager that knew it was fake, they're going to take that gun away from you and probably, or pull out a real gun. Kind of what the cop did. Pulled out a real gun. She had had been approached enough and scared enough that it helped her feel a little safer. It, has for it helped her feel safer. I've got my mentally disabled daughter 
wandering around with a freaking fake Uzi hanging out her pants in plain sight because it made her feel safe. What the? So this is where I kind of, I'm, I'm like, I don't like throwing bad money after bad money and or good money after bad money, taxpayer money after already bad money. So we got a sergeant that's bald, which really doesn't matter. He's black and he shoots a white woman, which the media doesn't think matters. And then he lies in the report and the chief lies. Remember, a lot of times it's not the actual incident. It's the cover up. This is why people don't trust cops. This is why we don't believe the media. This is why you should never trust government. You should never talk or cooperate with government because it will be used and lied. And they hid this video for two freaking years and pushed the narrative that the poor cop was in fear of his life because she pointed a gun. For Westall's state of mind. Doesn't make any sense to me. Vernon C. Yeah. Hicks, at the time a manager of a nearby Domino's Pizza, was one of the last people to speak with Westall when she stopped by. This narrative that's out there that she was a distraught individual, fist clenched, uh, balled up, screaming. That's incorrect. If she was um, belligerent, if you will, if she was like that, she wouldn't have made three steps into my store. I so this guy is absolutely masculine male working in a hood and does not put up with bullshit crazy people coming in his store. He flat out says it. He's worked, I guarantee you, in this area where there's a bunch of idiots. And he said if she was acting crazy, she would have come in. He didn't have a problem with her coming in with a fake Uzi, but he wouldn't let somebody come in <laughs> that was belligerent. <laughs> I don't tolerate any of that whatsoever. And as he talked to Westall, Hicks also noticed the gun. And she said, oh, don't worry, it's not real. <laughs> if she was belligerent, she wouldn't have got three steps in my store. The Uzi, she said it wasn't real, it was cool. Immediately realizing her baggy sweatpants would not support an actual submachine gun with an extended clip. So that's pretty interesting that he, because see, in court, if you make these conclusions as a cop, you have to justify why you have expertise in this area or why you believe this or why. How did that this guy would be asking court, how did you know what a Uzi with a fully loaded magazine weighs? And he would be like, it's heavy. Well, how do you know that? I just know it. Have you ever seen a Uzi? Have you ever held one? Have you ever held a fully loaded magazine? Have you ever held a gun with a fully loaded magazine? All that would have to be articulated for him to make the statement, I knew that her baggy pants couldn't support a fully loaded uh, gun like that. I mean, that's the problem when people use fake guns. You pull a fake gun on me, when I see a gun, I, I, I give a quick check on that gun immediately. Is it on safe? Is it on fire? If it's pointed at me, I'm looking down the barrel for a bullet or in the cylinder for a bullet. I, I know what a gun looks like. I've had several guns pointed at me. I mean, so I know what a gun looks like. And when I see a gun, I give that initial evaluation. People in the hood learn the same way. People in high crime areas learn the same way. When you deal with thugs and a lot of peaceful protests, you learn certain aspects about guns bricks, sticks, bats. You just learn things. As Westall continued to walk through the parking lot, Sergeant David Perry, who was leaving a nearby donut shop, assigned him... Oh, shit. That's why he shot her. She made him leave the donut shop. Did you guys catch that? I know you're going to think I made this shit up. The sergeant was pissed because he had to leave the donut shop. The parking lot, Sergeant David Perry, who was leaving a nearby donut shop leaving a nearby donut shop. He was pissed that his donut was interrupted, so he killed this woman. Assigned himself to the earlier 911 call. The dash camera and his patrol vehicle captured their brief, deadly meeting, but because the supervisor, with more than two decades of experience, failed to activate his Coban or... Two decades, been on the force for 20 years. That might explain that. Can't activate his body cam. Forgot. 
failed to do it. He was driving up here slow, probably had a little bit of icing on his finger, and he went to activate it, and the icing made it slick, and it slid off the uh, button. That's probably what he put in his report. Kind of like he put in a report, he pointed, she pointed the gun at him. Her body-worn camera, there is no audio. As Westall stops, takes a drag from her vape pen, and then puts her hands up. She says, and she mouths, and I think they show it here in the other video, she mouths, it's a toy, it's not real. Westall turns, showing the gun, then appears to reach for it. As probably reached for it because he probably told her to put it on the ground. We don't have audio. If he told her to put it on the ground, absolutely unjustified shooting, 100%. If he told her, do not reach for that gun or I will shoot you, now the shooting's justified. Do you see the difference? Just in that little audio, and we don't know. We know that he already lied in a report and said that she pointed at him. We know that they hid this video uh, for two years. We know that, but we don't know if he said, put the gun on the ground and then executed and killed her, or if he said, don't reach for the gun or I will shoot you. That one difference in statement makes this shooting justified or not justified, in my opinion. As the officer opens fire, we're stopping the video here. Now, some people's going to say, and I guarantee you the defense or who's ever defending this or prosecuting, what the prosecutors ain't going to charge him, but the, the county attorney is going to be defending the cop's action if this goes to court saying, hey, the officer was scared. And they're going to say, she even dropped to a fighting stance. And I guarantee you, there'll be cops supporting this cop saying, hey, man, she went in a fighting stance. She was going to draw. That shooting was good. That's bullshit. We don't know what he told her. If he told her to put the gun on the ground, this shooting is absolutely bullshit. And I think she's dropping because she saw him probably freaking out with his gun and went, don't shoot. I think she says, stop or wait or something. And she's dropping to her knees. I think he might have said, somebody said in one of the reports, go to your knees. He told her to go to her knees. So that's why this so-called shooting stance where the cops will be trying to justify this is bullshit. Here, because what follows is too graphic to show on television. I've got the graphic, I'll show it. Sergeant Perry, in a sworn affidavit written hours later, said he told Westall to put her hands up and go to her knees. A nearby wit. So he says, I told her to put her hand up and go to her knees. We don't know that. Maybe he said put the gun on the ground. If he did, this is so bullshit. And since he already has a, 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 an idiot because he doesn't know how to turn on his, his camera and he lied in his report and said she pointed at him, who do you believe? They're going to lose his case. It's just how much money are the taxpayers going to get screwed because of it. Witness who had his own dash camera rolling captured footage of Perry driving up to Westall. And although the fatal encounter happened off screen. Five shots. I said seven earlier, but there's seven wounds, I think. That camera captured what sounds like five gunshots. Westall was pronounced dead at the scene. An autopsy confirmed the five shots caused seven wounds, including one bullet that entered the back of her head. So it hit the back of her head because she ducked and covered. And she went into this defensive, I'm no threat, on my knees, fetal position, and covered my head, don't hurt me. That's why she got shot in the head. Five shots from the big bad 20-year sergeant. Chief William McManus, when briefing the media, described Westall as agitated, but failed to mention the fatal headshot, saying only that she had... Oh, the chief failed to mention the headshot. Just an oversight, kind of like the video. Kind of like I knew she didn't point the gun because I saw the video, but I still put in a report that she pointed a gun wounds to her upper and lower torso. McManus also very clearly stated on camera and on the record that Westall pointed a weapon at the sergeant during the incident. First the woman uh, gave her some commands. She very slowly turned around, pulled the gun, and pointed at the sergeant. So this is what happens when you got a chief, somebody in charge, that thinks they're the smartest person and they want to get on TV 
So they, and, and I've briefed many of chiefs on incidents that we're working either in progress or we're doing a warrant and it went bad or something and, they, and they're going to do a press release. How it goes down is they come in there and they talk to the officer involved and they go, what happened? And we're like, oh, man, it went to shit. He did this. He did that. He did that. And they go, okay. And then they may talk to the sergeant. They may talk to two people. They may only talk to the sergeant, no one else. And the sergeant may have only talked to two of the guys. And so he comes in and gets his little brief, and then he goes in front of the press. Oh, this is what happened. And uh, and then he looks like a dumbass. So a smart chief will have a lieutenant or a captain do it. And then when it turns out to be shit, he can go, I didn't know. We've corrected it. The captain misstated. The lieutenant misstated. The sergeant misstated. The detective misstated the facts. It was an oversight. We're going to correct it. See, you lose that ability when your dumbass wants to get in the camera and be the star of attention and you want to give the press briefing. Because now when you misstate it, you can't blame anybody but your dumbass self. Although McManus stated later in his briefing, when pressed by a KSAT reporter, he didn't know how far Westall got with the gun. So he says that she pointed a gun. Then he says, I don't know how far she got. Then he signs a report saying it was pointed. Nevertheless, the pointed gun narrative was repeated in an in-custody death report signed by McManus nine days after the shoot. Nine days later, he says it was pointed at the officer. Man, this is why government accountability, this is why I'm so hard on cops and cops that come here and want to crack on me and make me the bad guy because I'm, I'm pointing this shit out and I'm, I'm turning on a code blue. I should be part of the brotherhood. I shouldn't show bad stuff. I should only run around and promote the narrative that all cops are heroes and, and they're all great because I was a cop and we're all cops and we're all in it together and we're all great. Whatever. There's bad and good in every career field. Any career field that tries to tell you we're all good, you know they're freaking lying. Okay? So every cop that comes here and tries to defend this shit just shows that you're no better than the other individuals who are intentionally lying. You're just burying your head in the sand. Shooting long after the chief would have had access to Perry's dash camera video. Oh, it's extremely tr troubling. Adam Cortez is the attorney for Westall's family. It's not at all what happened. To say it's a false narrative is awfully kind. Awfully kind. That's lawyer talk for saying he's freaking lying. But I don't really want to say that. But then I think he says it. When you have video evidence that completely contradicts your statement, that's not a false narrative. A false narrative is when you're mistaken. That's an outright lie and nothing's being done about it. Cortez says Perry's actions grow more disconcerting when the footage is zoomed in. And in a demand letter he sent to the city this summer, claims... Here's where they show her mouth. Watch her mouth working. I believe this is what she's saying. We don't have dash cam footage of the officer's mouth saying, put the gun on the ground. Bang, 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 bang. We don't have that. It shows Westall trying to explain that it's not an actual machine gun. You see her say, it's a toy. It's not real. Wait! And then five shots, one, two. She says, wait, before she gets shot in the head. Two, three, four, five, including the one as she's falling that went through her head that killed her. Andre says McManus caused her family horrendous pain by mischaracterizing the final moments of her daughter's life. And if I have any request, would be please just wait for the... This woman has zero credibility. You've got a mentally ill daughter that you know is carrying around a fake Uzi, and you justify it because men have approached her and she feels safe with it. You let your daughter carry a fake freaking Uzi. That right there tells me she shouldn't get a damn dime. But she's a mom, Rick. She's a single mom and she was trying to help her child and she deserves and she has to work twice as hard as a man to get paid less. Whatever. Facts before you say that because there's families out there that are holding on to those every word. SAPD official. You're holding on to words. What about all the people that she freaking runs around with a Uzi hanging out her ass? Now, what about all those people? Well, they're, they're not hanging on any word. They should just deal with it. It's my daughter and she's got problems and it makes her feel safe, so it's okay. So if she wanted to carry around a freaking tank and drive a tank over cars because it made her feel safe, we'd be okay with that too, Mom? refused to make the chief available for an interview for this story, citing a settlement demand sent by Westall's family earlier this year. The first settled demand is always extremely high. They don't really want them to accept it. They're setting the bar high. Then the city refuses to pay. Then they either negotiate and go to trial or not go to trial. Which attorneys for the city ultimately rejected. According to our records, it's the third time since October 2008. 
Third time the Chiefs got caught lying. 18 McManus has given information at the scene of a fatal officer involved shooting that was later refuted by video or had to be corrected by McManus himself. In October 2018, after an SAPD officer shot and killed someone inside a home on the near west. SAPD shot and killed someone. Eh, Rick, isolated incident. These are all isolated incidents, Rick. Why do you cover these? You're making cops look bad. Okay, it's my fault. Side, McManus told the media the person killed was armed and a threat to the officer. The guy killed was armed. Uh, the officer saw a weapon in uh, one of the individuals. This guy just likes to get on camera with all his stars and shit. Come out there with the guy with the most stars. Waistband, uh, and at some point thereafter, uh, the officer wound up using uh, deadly force on that individual. That narrative was untrue. The individual killed was unarmed teenager Charles Roundtree, who McManus would later reveal was simply in the line of fire of another person in the home who did have a gun. So they killed this kid who was unarmed, and the chief got out there and said he had a gun pointed at the guy, lied, did the narrative, and, and look, San Antonio is a left-wing liberal shithole in Texas. It's no different than Austin or Dallas or Houston. They're liberal shitholes run by liberal policies, and they're all about equality and peaceful protest and all this other bullshit, and they're always freaking lying trying to cover their narrative. Then there was the shooting death in January of Randy. G oh, crap. Another bald guy gets killed. Damn, what do they got against bald people in freaking San Antonio? Dale. During that briefing, McManus told the media an SAPD officer and... Now, I did a complete video on this. I'll try to put the link up here in one of the corners uh, where they said the press release says, yeah, uh, he tried to ram the officers. That's why they shot him. And the video clearly shows not the video I did shows it better than this. They shoot him. And then he either steps on the gas or falls on the gas because he was shot. And that's when he rammed the vehicle. But they justify the shooting saying he rammed it before they shoot him. They flat out freaking lied. Same chief, same department. Rick, these are isolated incidents and they're just mistakes. And all these guys are heroes and you're just making cops look bad. Shut up with your stupid crap. Federal agent who was part of the same task force killed Goodale after he started ramming into occupied police vehicles. But surveillance video of the shooting showed that was also an incorrect surveillance showed none of the cops body cam war body cams showed it because they were all hidden and suppressed statement in that Gadale's truck didn't roll forward until after he was shot a false narrative living on long after a loved one has died it's a pain andre now knows all too well it's unbearable it's unbearable my daughter's running around with uzi hanging out her sweatpants because it makes her feel safe and she's mentally ill and I'm a good mom. What freaking ever. That. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this cop was justified in shooting her because I don't know what he said. However, if you run around with Uzi and you reach for it around a cop, I'm pretty sure 99 times out of 100, you're going to get shot. Just, just my educated guess. You have so much hopes and dreams. Dylan Collier, KSAT 12. So much hopes and dreams. My daughter's mentally ill running around with a Uzi, and I know it, but it makes her feel safe. And we had hopes and dreams. Was your hopes and dreams that she would get killed so you could sue the city for millions? Because that dream came true. 12 News. Now, we believe in transparency. Okay, so... This is pretty much the end of it. Now I'll show the, the footage of the uh, shooting. That's the graphic and scare and the warning. Don't watch. It's bad. She goes on the ground. You see the gun fly. All right, here we go. Okay, at this point is when the officer first sees the girl. Remember, he's at a donut shop and he puts himself on the call. When you put yourself on a call, that means the call went out. There's nobody available to respond. And the first unit that clears will take it. The sergeant self-assigned him this call. So when a call came out, the sergeant goes, I'm right around the corner at the donut shop where I'm always at. I'll take it. And so this is where he sees the girl after the dispatch said, there's a woman that's irate and supposedly she has a gun in her white sweatpants. Female, white female. So this is where he sees her. She's got a gun. He doesn't stop. He doesn't get on the PA. He doesn't tell her to show his hands. He pulls up to her.
You can clearly see the gun right here. Any cop would see this. You're already looking at this woman. She's walking. She supposedly has a gun. And you see this as she's walking. You know damn well that looks like a magazine. So there's no doubt that he believes at this point, I think, there's something that looks like a gun. She stops, not aggressive, not acting maniac, not out of control. Takes the smoke of her vape, switches the vape to the other hand. That's probably not a good move. Again, I don't know what he's telling her. Don't move your hands. Don't go by the gun. Put your hands up. Don't reach for the gun. The problem is when you tell somebody to go to their knees, their hands can't be up. If you want to try to kneel down with your hands up, it hurts. You land hard. Now, for sure he knows the gun because she says, it's a toy. It's not real. It's not real. It's a toy. Clearly sees the gun. So there, there's no question in my mind. He knows that she's got a possible gun. Looks like a gun. Looks like a magazine. Now, the Domino's manager knew that a fully loaded Uzi is too damn heavy to be held up, held up by sweatpants. The Domino's manager knew that. The cop missed that clue. He didn't know that. Why? Because cops have been taught that when we see anything that even looks like a gun, we can shoot, we can scream, we can yell, and we claim fear of our life and nothing happens. That's the problem when you don't hold government accountable. The Domino's manager knew that it wasn't a real gun because it, her sweatpants couldn't hold it up. But the 20-year sergeant didn't know that. Hmm. Wait! Right before she's dead. Last words. Wait! Wow. No audio. Because he doesn't do his body cam. This is the car cam. Luckily, he pointed his car or we wouldn't even have this. I paused it. I didn't want to pause it. You see the gun flip out pretty freaking quick. So, uh, the, the fact that she, he said she pointed at him, there is no way this gun is pointed. And I will go frame by frame. It is never pointed at him. It's at her back. Her hand comes forward empty. There is no way in hell you say this gun was pointed at him. It's not. Her hand is empty, and there's video evidence that shows it's empty. Not only is there video evidence, I don't know if he shot the gun because the gun really heads the other way kind of hard. So it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if, if the reason that gun is flying that way, it was hit on one of his five panic rounds. Even though he saw the empty hand. Empty hand. Okay? No confusion. Rick, there's a shadow. The cops will be here. There's a shadow that could be a gun. See right there, Rick? That could be a gun. She could have had a knife and she was going to... He was in fear of his life. Rick, that officer, you know, it's all her fault. I'm not saying it's not some of her fault. Cops shouldn't be killing people when they don't have to. Who thinks, looking at this, that this cop had to kill her? It's obviously he did not have to kill her. If he would have waited... If he would have backed up, if he would have paused instead of being conditioned over and over again that we get to shoot anybody and we're always found justified and the DA never charges us. This is absolute bullshit. Uh, he, he wanders around here a little bit. Uh, I think he goes over and kicks the gun out on the radio, slides the gun out of the way, walks around. Yeah, I showed her. That's what you get. Yeah, I'm a I'm a tough sergeant. Twenty years, baby. You can't touch me. I got immunity. You can't sue me, and the DA won't charge me. What you What you gonna do about it? Nothing. Total bullshit. Earning the hate. We'll end that there.